Uh, good afternoon. My name is Rennie McKay. I'm Governor Mark Gordon's policy director. Just want to welcome you all to this virtual town hall uh, to discuss the uh, governor's strategy uh, to help Wyoming survive, drive, and thrive. And so uh, here we'll we'll get going in, in one second. We're very excited to have so many uh, people participating in this virtual town hall uh, this afternoon. Um, we also really appreciate that over the last few weeks, we've had uh, many hundreds of people visit the governor's website where uh, the proposals that have come to him um, to help build out this strategy are. That's the drivethrive.yo.gov website. And I uh, hope many more of you will visit there and participate with, with comments after this town hall. So again, um, I'm Randy McKay. I'm the governor's policy director. And this afternoon, I'm, I'm joined with the group uh, who was tasked from within the cabinet to help uh, develop proposals for the governor um, for this strategy to survive, drive, and thrive. And so uh, with me uh, this afternoon, the director of the Department of Workforce Services, Robin Cooley, the director of the Department of Family Services, Corin Schmidt, the CEO of the Wyoming Business Council, Josh Durrell, and the director of the Department of Health, Stephen Johansson. And also helping us out today from the Department of Workforce Services is, is Ty Stockton, and really appreciate him. He is going to help uh, facilitate your questions. So um, we, throughout this uh, virtual town hall, would like your comments and questions using the Q&A function uh, of Zoom. And so we'll, we'll take your questions as we go along. And uh, again, uh, you can offer some comments there, but more than anything, if you go to drivethrive.yo.gov, you can uh, enter comments on the specifics of the proposals and the um, options that the governor's considering uh, with the funding that he's received through the federal government. So um, Ty, if you can, and we'll, we'll kick off with the uh, PowerPoint right now and switch over to that view. So again, the, the, at the core of what we're talking about is this strategy that uh, the governor laid out at the goal level, and that was to, to help um, Wyoming drive towards a future where its citizens will thrive. And this was um, catalyzed by the federal uh, congressional act, the American Rescue Plan, and Wyoming receiving dollars through that and having several years to be able to spend it so we could think about a future there. So that, that led to uh, the creation of the strike team that I just introduced and these folks, and we also have other members who are on that strike team. And for several months, they've been taking suggestions and considering existing um, strategies and uh, existing public comment that they've received um, as they look towards the future for their agencies and their sectors of the state. And then also the emerging ideas that have come about. So we've got um, hundreds, uh, over a hundred proposals um, that are on the, the website that, so you can all see them as well. And um, we've got many, many uh, proposals that have come in on this. But uh, essentially, again, um, when, the, uh, when Congress passed the American Rescue Plan, which is a COVID relief bill, and that brought money to Wyoming, it catalyzed a discussion about how we look to this future because the governor's goal is to take the, this money that um, the federal government is allocating to states to try to help make sure that we can um, have the best future possible because essentially we're, the, the money that's funding this is being borrowed from our kids and our grandkids and our great grandkids. So that, that, that's the, the goal behind um, what we're gonna talk about and then we're gonna get into some specifics. Um, uh, Ty, if you flip to the next slide, the, um, this, this funding and this plan um, and these proposals um, came to the governor after um, several other federal acts passed Congress that brought a lot of money to Wyoming to help deal with the pandemic and the, and the economic effects of the pandemic. So we really viewed that, that that phase as the survive phase. Last year and this year in particular, when we're really just trying to make sure that individuals are safe and that businesses and individuals still have their livelihoods. So we call that the survive phase. And on this next slide, I'll, I'll talk about um, what was done last year 
to use the CARES Act, another um, allocation to the state of Wyoming to save lives and protect livelihoods. So um, had a, had a um, very significant focus on small businesses and those businesses impacted by COVID. Um, and um, we were looking at uh, making sure that um, those businesses that were impacted um, could survive. And also uh, another big focus was education and, and how important it was to have our kids in person in school and, and to be there safely. So a lot of funding went there and a lot of funding went to the healthcare system to make sure that um, there were staff in hospitals and that infrastructure could be upgraded. And uh, another area where we were able to put money was broadband to uh, allow for, for telehealth tele-education and tele-working. And so those were a big focus in the survive phase last year. And this year on this next slide, again, we, we have had to deal with the effects of the pandemic, both on the economy and on individuals. So we've put money into hospitals and also provided business relief through a, a tax, um, tax relief and a tax credit on the unemployment rate. So that was a focus in the survive phase. So that's kind of where we've been. And, and now as we, as we start to look to the future, um, we are looking at the drive and thrive phases of this. So what can we do to drive towards that future where we're all going to thrive? So the driving is really the planning and getting ourselves ready um, for the next year. So time next slide. Um, and that led to the governor establishing a strike team to develop ideas that, that help move us from driving to thriving in the future and planning for how we're going to use the American Rescue Plan Act was the name of it, the ARPA. Um, and there's a specific component of that that came to the state. Um, other specific dollars went to cities, others went to counties, the tribes, and others have gone to individuals and also to other entities around Wyoming. Um, but we'll, so we'll talk about that a little bit later. But the focus with this um, um, allocation that came to the governor's office that he'll work on with the legislature to uh, make some investments that help Wyoming again, um, be uh, as, as vibrant a state as it can be into the future is what he asked of the strike team as they're, as they're planning for this drive and, and thrive phase. So there uh, on, the, um, on the next um, uh, slide is, is some details about the American Rescue Plan Act. And so what happened earlier this year is $534 million came to Wyoming. And here are the, the, um, the uses and the ways we can use that money. Um, so there are obviously um, sideboards on this um, that are significant around uh, the public health response and um, their infrastructure, negative economic impacts and broadband um, is another example of of infrastructure, but there you can see that there's also the allowable use to replace public sector revenue. And so uh, Wyoming obviously lost a very significant amount of revenue in 2020 um, because of COVID and, and during that pandemic and, it, and the height of that pandemic. And so we were and are able to use revenue loss um, to help uh, with that. And, and that also creates the opportunity that we have additional general fund dollars if this year and in the coming years um, that will help us both um, avoid future budget cuts because we had to make huge budget cuts last year, but also to make some other investments in Wyoming's future. So again, those, those are the sideboards, but when the governor, um, when, this, when this act passed Congress, the governor did not want to just look at the act and, and how, how um, it required money to be spent. He wanted um, folks to, to think as big as possible and as boldly as possible about what it would be best to do to help Wyoming thrive. And so as we go to the next slide, um, he, he laid out some criteria of his own for what he would um, use these dollars for. So as you look at these, there's a big focus on that future, but also uh, there's a focus on the fact that these are one-time dollars, that these are not sustainable. And so we can't um, replenish budget cuts and you can't start a program that's going to need money in three years. Um, so we're really looking to try to leverage these to have the biggest impact as possible 
knowing that they're one time in nature. So th those are the governor's criteria. And that was the charge to the strike team and the other people on the panel here today um, to try to meet these criteria and keep in mind the ARPA requirements as well, but, but thinking as big as possible. So that then um, brought in the, the goal of, of each of the, the people from the cabinet that I introduced uh, represent important um, industries and sectors of, of Wyoming's um, economy and also um, the, the social fabric of, of healthcare, family services, but also looking at workforce and economic development. So that was very important, but the governor also wanted to bring in other folks. And, and on this next slide, he's asked legislators for their perspective, county commissioners and municipal officials so that we have a really diverse set of um, and ge geographically diverse uh, set of eyes on this problem and trying to develop the, the best solutions possible. So we really appreciate um, everyone serving and giving extra time um, to this project. And uh, as we look at this next slide, uh, one of the great things that, that came because of the governor's criteria and bringing forward this group is, is that um, we're able to, to see that we shouldn't just focus on the American Rescue Plan. We should think about what the best ideas are to help Wyoming thrive and then figure out what needs to be done to fund them. And um, since then, the, the uh, infrastructure package passed Congress. And again, um, it, there, are, there are some great opportunities and there are some challenges with that act, but uh, we, we definitely have been looking to the future as much as possible over the last few months to be able to take advantage of the opportunities that are uh, part of that. And hopefully it was clear. The other factor is, is that the American Rescue uh, Plan has many different programs within it, not just what the state has, but other programs that go to other sectors. So there are sometimes overlap and there's other um, dollars and, and grants that the state or communities or individuals can apply for through that act. And so we're having to keep an eye on that full breadth of, of programs and that uh, all of the, the different opportunities that are out there for the state of Wyoming. So um, as we move into the next slide, this planning led to the establishment of, of 10 goals and that'll kind of take us into what we do for the rest of, of this uh, town hall is, is to look at the proposals that meet each of these goals. So uh, these again are on the governor's website, drive, thrive.yo.gov, and you can see then the specific proposals to meet each goal there too. But these three um, are very much umbrella goals um, too for the um, moving into that strong state. And then on the next slide, you can see the last seven goals and they all are very important and they all also help support um, that the, the, the main focus and vision of this, and that is taking to Wyoming into a future where uh, its residents and citizens can thrive. So I'm really glad that uh, I've got the, uh, such a great group of folks from the cabinet to work with. They're each gonna talk to you a little bit about how they've worked through um, proposals to meet those goals. And then we're gonna take your questions and um, also then talk a little bit more about the public comment period. So on this last slide, um, this is the information about how, again, you can be uh, participate in this process going forward. So um, the governor um, is going to be releasing his proposals to the legislature on December 16th. Those are just proposals from him. They will then have in, until the session in February to uh, consider those and then vote on them in February. Um, and in January, the Joint Appropriations Committee, the JAC, will vote on the governor's proposals and make its recommendations to the full legislature. And then on the 14th of February, the legislature convenes. Um, so I think on this next slide, again, is the uh, information for how you can comment here going forward. You can do this today or you can do it in, in the weeks ahead. Um, so we really appreciate this. Again, if you're providing comments um, through December and into January, uh, the legislature is interested in those, so we'll be making sure that these comments are available to legislators as well, and then summarizing them and presenting that to them in January. So uh, again, visit that website, drivethrive.yo.gov, and if you go to the specific 
goal page, there's a link for you to click on where you can give us um, comments and feedback. So um, really excited about this and the proposals that have come forward um, so far. And so the next person I'm gonna turn it over to again is the CEO of the Wyoming Business Council, Josh Durrell. He's gonna to talk to you a little bit about um, how the Business Council has dealt uh, with um, coming up with the governor's charge and uh, the proposals that uh, are there in that economic diversification sector. So. Uh, Josh, I'll turn it over to you. Thanks, Rennie. Uh, yeah, I'm Josh Durrell. I'm the CEO of the Wyoming Business Plan. And uh, as, as Rennie mentioned, you know, we've been working um, at the Business Council over the last couple of years on our uh, refreshed strategic plan. And that informed a lot of the programming and a lot of the things that you'll see in the goal to um, possible solutions. Uh, I, I want to stress that that is really all about adding value to our core industries, and, and we can all realize that natural resources, tourism, and agriculture are, are critical components to our state, um, but we want to also leverage those to activate new sectors. And so as we began to look at programs, and as we started to talk with our stakeholders and, and continue to listen with our partners uh, across agencies in the state, but also organizations across the state, we really looked at how do we do that best with an eye toward the future. And so, you know, as we were doing that, <laughs> luckily we, we've had a lot of federal money that is, is going to enable this. Um, I think from our perspective, this is what we're doing every day, but now we just have a, a source of funding that may be able to, to provide that without having to rely on, on that state funding. And so it's a, it's a pretty really interesting thing to have but it's something that we do every day. And so as we looked at these different proposals, we really started to look at what are some of the simple technical problems that could be addressed immediately? Knowing that there are going to be those immediate problems that come up that we know that we can put some money and some programs toward, and they're really pretty simple solutions. And I'll give you an example of that. One of those, it, it deals with what we call the Business Ready Communities Grant Program that the state and the Wyoming Business Council administers. Now this develops infrastructure for communities across the state and many of you know what that is. Um, but during the pandemic and throughout COVID and the inflation that has ensued because of supply chain disruptions and challenges there, those projects are at risk of not being able to be completed because of a shortage of funding. And so we said, well, this is, a, this is actually a quite simple problem. We can understand how much funding is needed and to get those projects over the hump. Again, a very simple solution, put a program together and enact it. But we also realize that there are much more complex challenges that are gonna require more of a framework and planning plus action. And so what we did is we really kind of started to look at, you know, what are the, the big things that we can do and look at, you know, maybe statewide comprehensive economic development strategies. Um, that's, that's some funding from the EDA we, that we have that we can go ahead and use, but it doesn't take away from this ARPA funding. We also know that we need to be working with what I call a problem-driven, iterative, and adaptive style by taking a look at our economic drivers and figure out what's really gonna make a difference as we go to the future. And so as we looked at all of these proposals, we really broke them down into uh, four different categories. And those were statewide economic development, energy, technology, and know-how, business expansion and entrepreneurship, and strong communities. And so you can see all of these proposals fit into what, what I would consider a way to add value to those core industries that we have and really activate those new economic sectors by taking what we have internally and helping it grow. And so that's a really big component of what we looked at, especially as it related to goal two. And we're looking forward to more input on these, of course. And again, and again, with that framework of being adaptive and knowing that the economy is gonna to continue to change over the years, I think we're looking to build more systems rather than those one-offs that might help an individual in the moment, but look at how do we develop systems that are gonna work long-term. Thanks, Rennie. Thank you very much, Josh. Ty, any questions we should answer at this point? Um, I'm not sure there are any that uh, <clears throat> are specific to um, to what Mr. Drell has, has covered or, or what you covered earlier. Uh, that we did have one that come in that asked, "What's the best method for communication 
to provide feedback on all of the proposals instead of an individually using Google Forms. Um, the, the feedback is through that website though, correct? And I can pull that back up on the screen if you'd like me to. Thanks, Ty. Yeah, that, that's a great point. And, um, you know, for municipalities in particular, um, the Wyoming Association of Municipalities, WAM, uh, the mayor, Matt Hall from Cody is on the strike team. And so uh, please also, if through an organization like that, feel free to, to uh, give comments and, and uh, bring comments and feedback through your representatives um, who are, are out there to reach out. I know um, I've spoken to the Association of Municipalities and with the County Commissions Association. So also through your local elected officials in your town or county is another way you can always um, give feedback. So thanks, Ty. Certainly. Um, there's another question here that uh, that might might be something that you can you can answer. Uh, we had a question: Has the strike team explored funding for community mental health providers through ARPA and grant funding opportunities, specifically Section 9813 under Medicaid implements and 8515 FMAP to pay for mobile crisis units? Is that something you'd want to address now? Sure. Or, or um, when we get to um... Director Joe Hanson, maybe uh, Stefan, answer that one then. Because that's it, there's a, a bigger topic there to hit on, and then a specific one. So th thanks a lot for that one, Tyler. So we'll we'll definitely get to that. Um, okay. um, there, uh, we've had a few questions asking if if it's going to this uh, presentation is being recorded. It is being recorded. Um, we will have a link to it on the Department of Workforce Services website. Um, the governor's office may have a link to it as well. Um, on the Department of Workforce Services site that we have a uh, virtual town hall series that we've been running throughout the pandemic. And we're just gonna post this on there. So if, if nowhere else you can find it, you can certainly find it on the DWS website. Um, upper right-hand corner-ish of the page, there'll be a link to virtual town halls. You can click that and, and find it there. The other question is, could we get a, a copy of the slide deck, um, the one that you prepared, uh, Mr. McKay? Um, we can also, if that's all right with you, we can also post that um, on that uh, town halls page. So it'll be right there, right there with the with the recording. And then one more question for you before you move along. Um, we had a question come in and of those ten goals that that you um, presented on the the drive thrive. Um, of those ten goals, are they ranked one to ten or are they equally weighted? Thanks so much. For, for handling that. And thanks for all the questions, folks. I'd please keep them coming. Um, certainly very interested in, in any questions or feedback you've got uh, this afternoon. Uh, in terms of the, the, the numbering, no, that was just a means to track them. There, there is somewhat, as I, I think I said, the first goal is a, a somewhat overarching, but that doesn't mean, it, and as you look on the website and you see proposals, we're not weighting proposals by goal in, in any way. So all proposals are gonna be considered equally, um, but we are trying to, as uh, Mr. Durrell said, we are trying to find a, as data-driven a process to analyze the proposals as we can, uh, because we're trying to, again, um, have the, the most significant impact possible um, on, the, on the future of Wyoming. So um, you know, don't read much into the, the numbering on the goals um, and specifically also don't read anything into the um, where the proposals sit if you go into the website that that it, they weren't done um, on a priority basis. So Director Cooley, I'll turn it over to, to you uh, if, uh, to, to go next if you're all set. Absolutely. Thank you, Director McKay uh, and Director uh, CEO Durrell. Uh, I think that what you're going to hear a lot across these goals and these discussions is some interaction amongst uh, a lot of the ideas, which is really, really a neat thing to see what well, we're having this integration of ideas across proposals that will really help us build this system across Wyoming um, to, to address some of these issues that really are systemic across Wyoming. But, but good afternoon, my name is Robin Cooley. I'm the director of the Wyoming Department of Workfor Workforce Services. And my team was tasked with gathering and supporting the proposal efforts around goal number three, which is another very broad goal um, that speaks to better aligning workforce education and business 
to align it to meet the needs of industry and business around the state, which is which is really a, a need that we all have heard a lot about. But it's also to support the opportunities around the state to upskill and retrain our existing workers and our workers that want to maybe get into a new career across the state. Goal three is broad. It's capable of capturing education at all levels, whether it's K through 12, through post-secondary degree or professional skills certification, but it also grants opportunities or provides opportunities for lifelong learning, which I think if you've been reading um, some of the information out there, we all need to be start looking at being lifelong learners because of the, the great technology uh, ex increases that we're seeing uh, across, across the country. But we're also looking to upskill and educate opportunities to help ensure that our workforce is really ready to meet the needs of existing and newly emerging uh, businesses in our state, as CEO Durrell mentioned. I want to first talk about the stakeholders that submitted um, to proposals to, to Goal 3. It was very diverse. Um, of course, it included uh, the, the post-secondary educational institutions, the University of Wyoming Community College Commission, as well as all of the individual community colleges themselves. But also we heard from licensing boards, we heard from the Department of Education, um, we heard from several state councils, including um, the Wyoming Workforce Development Council, as well as the Education Attainment Executive Council and individual stakeholders. So the input was broad and that, that really helps us uh, recognize the need for this foundational workforce um, education, retraining, reskilling system that we have across the state. Again, working with business and um, education and workforce all together across the state with this. Um, but we, what we came up was with were really four broad strategies in, in some of the, the proposals that were submitted. Again, it talked about this alignment between systems that's really necessary to meet the needs of industry across the state. And I heard that again at the Governor's Business Forum this past week. You know, I, I've sentenced by somebody who indicated we really need that alignment. We, we really need to recognize what industry needs. And this is right down that alley. It really speaks to that, that need across our state. Also, another one of the big themes that we saw was this necessary support for the systems of hard hit industries across the state. The, those, it's, it's, it's healthcare, it's childcare, it's, it's the hospitality, hospitality tourism industry. You know, again, the things that CEO Durrell mentioned at the, and that you'll hear from some of the other, other strike team members today, it's, it's recognizing the needs they have, but also recognizing we've got a lot of, of emerging industries coming into our state and that's, that's exciting, but at the same time, it's a, little, it's a little daunting because we really need to start ramping up our efforts in some of these other areas. And so these proposals really speak to that opportunity. We also need to provide supports uh, across systems for education existing, our, our exist, for upskilling, excuse me, our existing workforce especially those that are in a gap area that we really recognized in the pandemic that may not be eligible for some of the other services that we can provide to individuals. So we've got the, this gap of adults uh, that can't get those services. So I think we're recognizing that and, and uh, making some allowances for that and service programs for those. But also another issue that came up was we just need to communicate this to our state. We have stakeholders out there. They don't know the services that we provide. They don't, the, the existing services that we provide, much less some of these new ideas that are, that are coming up out there. So I think we're looking at some opportunities to really educate and communicate and message some of those ideas. So consistent with these themes um, throughout, I think you'll other see, again, the other goals that, that fit right into this. But where I wanna start in, in, in my discussion here is with the Wyoming Innovation Partnership. As many of you have probably heard, that was, that's the governor's initiative to really take some of these systems, particularly our post-secondary institution systems and, and build them into this cohesive um, system that is working together across the state um, so that they can quickly pivot to the needs of industry. I think that's something that we've heard from the colleges is if they've got a business coming in, they wanna be able to pivot 
to assist and provide a curriculum, provide a training, provide a skill set for the workforce that that, that that new business that's coming into the state will need. And that's exactly what the governor is looking for with this WIP initiative. So to do that, and recognizing the urgency that, that, that was needed here, uh, he did go ahead and phase uh, 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 fund phase one of the WIP initiative with $27 million of the ARP funds. I wanna to speak to you first just a little bit about what that initially will fund, because I think it really speaks to then the future of, uh, of where we're going in a lot of these goals. Again, what that first phase does is it, it talks about and, and jump starts the ability to support and train entrepreneurs around the state. It also stimulates new business startups around the state, but as well, it assists and supports existing businesses in the state. How it does that is partially through this new Center for Entrepreneurship and Innovation, which I understand will be a, this, this support system for some of these new initiatives. So phase one investments, to be more specific, will start including entrepreneur and business ups, ups, uh, startups, which will be assisted through the expansion of UW's Impact 307. If you haven't heard of Impact 307, it's a remarkable program at UW um, working around the state. It's really made some, some big uh, strides ahead for entrepreneurs in the state. So it'll expand and work with Impact 307 uh, through expansions at Central Wyoming College and Laramie County Community College through the UW Business uh, Resource Network Services, which is the SBDC Manufacturing Works, and then, then with the tech transfer and mobile maker spaces around the state. The technology uh, needs will be enhanced by implementing a statewide computing education program with seed funding for the new School of Computing at UW. Um, in addition to this needed institutional infrastructure upgrade, um, there will also be a, a future software engineering degree development at Northwest Wyoming Community College, um, who will take the lead with these enhancements, which will also tap into that um, financial and tech and blockchain uh, curriculum. And that's, you know, again, it's a, something you've heard around the state. It's something that we're really at the forefront of that we need to develop now. And again, it's a, it's, there's an urgency to get that out there and get that started. So that was part of these initial startup funds. But also, again, tapping into uh, those industries that really need the assistance. Talk, speaking to the energy sector, they're looking at hard hit industries and have already, in fact, started down the road to a new power line technology program at Western Wyoming Community College that was created, again, in collaboration with industry through Rocky Mountain Power, our Southwest West Manufacturing Partnership, and the Wyoming Workforce Development Council's Next Gen Sector Partnership. So that's an example of taking all these systems and working together for a, for a curriculum and a program that is much needed across the state. I hope that's how, it, that's how all of these things should work as we move forward. But also looking at other hard hit industries, tourism, outdoor recreation, and hospitality. Northwest College will expand its outdoor recreation program with a new outdoor rec facility that's going to be also be proposed in conjunction with the new state student center. So I'm looking forward to seeing that uh, there at Northwest College. UW will also launch its Wyoming Outdoor Recreation, Tourism and Hospitality Center or the Worth Center with emphasis on programmatic collaboration with the state's community colleges, including Central Wyoming, College, Casper College, Northern Wyoming Community College District, and again, industry partners that will very much support uh, um, this workforce development and retention in this area. So these institutions of higher ed in Wyoming are really committed to using these investments as startup funds with anticipated short-term results that they can come out and show a return on investment so then that they can move into the WIP phase two and phase three, which the governor has asked them to provide, which will provide the actual metrics to move forward with these programs to again show that return on investment to Wyoming. Um, with that though, and what will integrate in with some of these WIP initiatives are other workforce development proposals that really speak to promoting Wyoming's programs 
um, that will help ensure Wyoming citizens know their options in the state. Again, that messaging uh, part of this, but also that those programs will promote career opportunities that are already available in Wyoming and that are high need areas um, to help improve skills and to change careers entirely, if that's what individuals are seeking to do. The, a number of the other proposals will also help positively affect our shrinking workforce, which I know all of you have been hearing about. You've been looking at the unemployment numbers going down, but the workforce uh, availability uh, not, not meeting that, that need. So a lot of these propose, proposals are meant to affect that shrinking workforce. Part of that is going to be helping with that early childhood uh, workforce. Uh, and developing that workforce because we heard about what a, an, a, what a difficulty that, that presented for individuals uh, with children at home. There's also going to be a talent transition, again, for those individuals that want to transition to another career. Upskilling training for ex-offenders. We're, we're, we've got an entire workforce area there that we really need to tap into. Again, that, that can really contribute to our economy and our economic well-being. Again, as well as with the wraparound services for adults that, that, that don't have other availability of services. A lot of these proposals will positively affect sectors though, where we are already low in numbers in. And we've had a lot of conversation around our office about construction numbers. We really need to, to build up those construction numbers around Wyoming, but as well manufacturing and healthcare. So those are some of the ideas around some of these proposals. Please get in, take a look at, at them. They are, they are uh, innovative, they're creative. And again, as, as Director McKay indicated, if they can't be funded with ARP funds, there, there are additional funds coming in that we'll be keeping our eye on. Uh, and this is a start down some of those ideas uh, for funding in other areas. So with that, I will stop. I've kind of maybe gone over my time, uh, but I'm happy to answer any questions. <laughs> Thanks so much, Director Cooley. I, I think we uh, started some good conversations and great questions have come in while you were talking there too. And I think as, as you heard, um, there's a lot of excellent proposals around workforce and education and also economic development um, that are that are in. So if you go to the drive thrive.yo.gov website, there's over a hundred proposals that we have today. Um, and obviously we're taking comments hearing if we missed anything. Um, the legislature will vote in February and they can consider any proposal. So um, there, there's plenty of opportunity for people to continue to offer feedback and ideas both through this group, um, which will go to the governor and then the legislator, legislature. And there will be um, public meetings and committee meetings during the session where this will be discussed. So um, really glad for that. So uh, we, we can't go through all of the proposals, um, but here's our, our website, the Drive Thrive. And if you go to the goals and proposals link, um, which is up, uh, you can get to that goals and proposals link off the top right corner there. Um, that's, that's where you can see the list of the 10 goals again. And if you click on any one goal, you can see all the proposals that go towards that goal. Um, and then at the bottom, there's that opportunity to, to click to give feedback. So um, really interested in hearing comments, both on the existing proposals and on what may not be there that should be there. Um, and so that we've had a question about uh, housing. Yes, there's a proposal for housing there on the website. Um, if you're interested in, in uh, health infrastructure or human services infrastructure, there's a proposal under goal five for that. Um, so just really urge you to explore that website more um, and look at the specific goals and proposals that, that are in and maybe they need to be shaped and, and they certainly will be um, between now and, and uh, them being funded. And one other thing to consider is, as I said, people could get engaged in the legislative process too um, on a proposal uh, if they want to, to uh, advocate for it that way. Um, but this funding does last until 2026 is the deadline to spend it. And so we're not planning to spend everything 
here in the next few months either. So some of these ideas are gonna need more time. So this is, this is a process that's probably going to last at least another year to refine all of the proposals and to come up with all of the ideas. Um, so just stay engaged um, both with, with your elected officials through the governor's office, through the legislature, through your county commission or your, or your um, city um, councilor to, or town council. So thanks so much for, for, for being involved. We're gonna keep going with the panelists unless Ty, any other questions we should hit right now? I think that we covered most of them here. There might be a few more after uh, our next couple of guests get done given their presentations, but uh, thanks for handling those. And did I share the website all right for you? I, I, I look good to me. So hopefully that okay. works for everybody out there across the state. And, you know, sure, I'm glad you're, you're all willing to do these virtual meetings because it does allow you to um, participate and learn more um, here as we go um, easily from your home and your community without having to travel to an, another city to, to participate. But so thanks for being involved. Um, Director Corn Schmidt is the leader of the Department of Family Services, and I'll go to her next. Thank you, Director McKay, and hello to everyone that's out there. We appreciate you joining us for this conversation today. Um, also with me is Director Stefan Johansson at the Wyoming Department of Health, and we really collaborated on much of the information that you see listed under Goal 5. We also looked into another goal around food insecurity, and then um, DFS also has a part under Goal 1 with child care. Um, but to kick it off, the conversations that we participated in, the input that we received, and just from a long time experience of working with health and human service providers really did forge the recommendations and the proposals that you'll see listed on the webpage. One thing that the COVID pandemic really taught us or showed us, which is something which many of us already knew, was the fragility of the human services and healthcare systems. Um, we haven't had to use them in quite the way that we used them over the past couple of years. And what that highlighted was really the lack of infrastructure at many of our community-based organizations, our health and human service providers, to be able to stand up and help a group of, of residents, citizens, who really did find themselves in a place that they did not expect to be in and, and needing resources that in the past they hadn't needed to access. So what you see in our overall proposals really is a combination of a lot of ideas that have come out from all of our providers. And what we tried to do is structure it in a way that gives some flexibility to our community-based organizations, both health and human services, to create ideas that they have and proposals that they may have to really support their operations and their businesses. We don't always invest in our nonprofit sector, especially on the health and human services side, in ways that we may invest in other parts of our industries. And we feel like this is a great opportunity to think about moving into the drive and thrive phases for human services and health services. Um, one of the, the many items that we're encouraging is thinking about the evidence-based programming that could be developed as a result of these dollars. Are there infrastructures building changes that need to be made to position community-based providers to serve children, families, elderly in a way that maybe they haven't been able to serve because of lack of capital space or even lack of technology? So our, our approach really was taking all of those things that we've learned over the years that would be really cool to do if we had some money and creating opportunities for those organizations to think deeply and carefully about how they can take their organizations to the next step and at the same time continue to serve what really we're what we really see are, are those children, families, and elderly that are most vulnerable. I'll let Stefan speak directly to some of the more health directed proposals that have come up. Um, the health task force has been incredibly instrumental in formulating many of the proposals that you see on the website. Um, that was led by uh, Jennifer Davis on behalf of the governor's office. 
uh, through lots of coordination with stakeholders, a lot of thinking um, and idea sharing over the past two years, resulting in a handful of initial proposals coming from the health task force. That's been another opportunity for many stakeholders to participate in, to, to provide their suggestions, ideas, and we've captured a lot of those in our goal as well. So, Mr. Johansson, any Thank you, Director, and, and good afternoon, everybody. I'm Stefan Johansson. I'm the Interim Director for the Department of Health. Uh, I'll just reiterate something that Director Schmidt mentioned. Really want to thank everybody who's on this call who participated in our uh, stakeholder input, really going back to the beginning of last summer uh, when we knew that we were going to need to plan to, uh, to spend these American Rescue Plan dollars. Uh, Director Schmidt and I, between the Department of Family Services and Department of Health, we oversee a broad array of, of services in the health and human service area, uh, as well as a lot of partnerships with, uh, with folks in your communities. Um, so things like healthcare access, uh, behavioral health supports, facility-based care, services for seniors, uh, children and families, um, just a, a wide range of, of uh, areas that the Department of Health and Department of Family Services touch. But the real goal for, for us, uh, you know, throughout uh, all of our work, uh, not just in this ARPA process, is to ensure the health, safety, economic security, and resiliency of uh, Wyoming residents and, and our uh, families and, and children. Um, that's really what, what all of this is about. And I think what that uh, really translates to is that uh, Corin and I both, I think the bulk of our job is partnering with folks in your communities, with organizations, uh, with provider groups, with nonprofits, uh, with residents directly. And what was reflected um, in that partnership uh, over the past several months was how engaged you've been with us to, to support these ideas. So again, thank you. Uh, thank you for that. To get a little bit more concrete, as Director Schmidt mentioned on some of the proposals you will see in goal number five, um, I'll give you a few highlights. Uh, one is a lot of provider relief and staffing stabilization, uh, really directly or indirectly related to the effects of the pandemic that a lot of our partners and provider groups have seen uh, when it comes to accessing uh, supply of labor, as well as retaining the staff that they have. Um, Wyoming is not unique uh, in uh, those labor shortages, especially in the health and human service area. Uh, but as Corin mentioned, the pandemic really exposed um, how difficult it has been to manage through some of those uh, crises and shortages. Uh, so there's proposals to uh, expand on some of the uh, funding and relief that went out during 2020 and 2021 to other provider groups. Um, to answer a few of the questions that, that came in in the chat box, I, I think the next category will do that. Uh, we also have a large proposal for a health and human service capital construction account. Um, this certainly wouldn't take care of the wish list for the entire state and, and every uh, facility or community, but would provide a good bedrock of investment for uh, facility upgrades, for new additions to health and human service capital construction, uh, for safety and infection control with uh, isolation rooms, negative pressure rooms, uh, general facility upgrades. Um, that, that would be a big component of the health and human service construction account that you'll see proposed. Uh, we also have a very specific proposal around telehealth, primarily around uh, telemental health or telepsychiatry that we really think is an opportunity for a rural and frontier state like Wyoming um, to invest in the capability to deliver additional mental health services uh, in a remote way uh, without having to have the physical infrastructure that we know is so challenging uh, in our state because of the long distances between communities and between providers and their, uh, their patients. And finally, on, on the kind of the macro side, uh, you'll see a proposal for a health and human service innovation fund. Um, as Director Schmidt mentioned, uh, part of our challenge and our task on the health and human service side throughout this process was to consolidate various proposals. Um, we received a lot of stakeholder input, a lot of ideas, and a lot of information that we tried our best to collapse into these categories that are easier for decision makers to, uh, to think about, to vote on, and to uh, ultimately approve or, or deny. The Innovation Fund is a good example of that, where uh, a lot of our partners, our providers, our community members, organizations, 
have uh, ideas or proposals for different ways to deliver services, different improvements to their uh, operations, a new product or a new type of service that they would like to pilot um, to achieve a certain goal, uh, like an improved outcome or a cost reduction. This innovation fund would allow those entities uh, to apply for these funds and, and we could set them up over a year, two years or three years to test out that idea, to test out that product. And, and we think that's an exciting uh, way to move forward. Uh, and then finally, as Director Schmidt mentioned, uh, we've, we've tried to support through this process uh, many different ideas, concepts, and proposals that came from the gov Governor's Health Task Force. Um, and, and they've made uh, several recommendations that you can see again under goal number five on the website, uh, including support for the emergency medical services or EMS system, uh, various proposals around mental health, uh, various proposals around suicide prevention, uh, as well as, as Director Schmidt mentioned, um, some proposals around food insecurity and making sure that our residents during times of crisis uh, have access to those types of supports that are so needed. Um, so I'm happy to answer any additional questions uh, that, that might come in. Uh, I did see Representative Provenza asked specifically about funding for mental health. Uh, two things there, Representative, uh, mental health funding is, is uh, carved out and earmarked within the Health Innovation Fund as a specific uh, area of allocation. Uh, and secondly, uh, we also in 2020 and 2021 used uh, different funds, uh, not the ARPA funds, but different relief funding that we received to support the mental health system um, and, and get that money out to providers. And that's a nice segue to let the group know that, especially in the Department of Health and Human Services, there's a lot of funding sources that we've received um, outside of these state government ARPA dollars that are also going or, or intended to go uh, to various areas that some of you have reached out about and even mentioned on today's uh, virtual town hall. Um, all of the directors here, I think, stand ready to communicate with you on what those alternative or other funding sources might be if you don't or eventually don't see uh, one of your preferences or proposals included in this uh, in, in this process going forward over the next uh, couple of months. Um, so happy to stand for any questions. Uh, Director McKay, uh, thanks for the opportunity today. Thanks so much. Uh, again, really appreciate you all taking this time to, to um, take questions from the public and talk a little bit about process. Um, it, it, again, we're, we're going over the goals and, and, and even more so the proposals pretty quickly. So. The best thing to do again is wade in on that website, um, look at the proposals, take some time, and then um, use the uh, the form there to, to send us comments. We're we're looking at those, um, and again, the, we'll have the comment period open until uh, January 14th. So we've got plenty of time to to get involved and uh, to ask some questions. But you know, one where area we already went past pretty quickly was broadband. It, it certainly was a area of focus last year, but there's more opportunity there. And um, uh, Josh, do you want to jump in and talk a little bit about uh, um, the broadband goal? Yeah, thank you. And that's that's goal number four, and and obviously not in priority, but uh, but goal number four. And I think it's a pretty important goal because as you listen to all of the directors and and you think about your own businesses or or own communities, you realize how important that connectivity is. And and uh, Director uh, Johansson mentioned it, and Director Cooley mentioned it, and I believe Director Schmidt mentioned the idea that a lot of the services are going to have to be delivered remotely because of our sparse population, and just because it's a it's a much more efficient way of, of delivering things. And so that has been uh, an area that I know is very important to the business community as well. And so when you think about it, it really does touch all of these goals. And so. When you, when you look at that, I think it's important to know that in 2020, uh, nearly $50 million was deployed of the CARES Act funding in the first Connect Wyoming program. And then uh, in this goal four, uh, we've launched, the, the Business Council has launched the next Connect Wyoming program, and we are taking applications right now through January 3rd. Now, one thing we, we do want to mention, and I, I think Director McKay, this is important also for folks to understand, is that right now we're trying to understand the need and where it can go, uh, where that money should go to make the biggest difference. Um, we don't know if it's uh, $0. Well, we know it's not $0, but we don't know if it's up to $150 million. Is it beyond that? What is really required to get the connectivity to the level that 
is important to the state. And so um, we're taking those applications, not knowing how much we'll need, but then we'll be able to assess and look for the various. And, and again, I think Director Johansson said it really well, we have a lot of other areas of, of funding at our disposal, especially around broadband. And so looking at those areas and looking at the funding sources together is going to help us leverage those dollars the best we can. Um, but again, that, that Connect Wyoming program is launched and, and rolling again, and uh, we'll take those applications until the 3rd of January. Thanks. Ty, any, any thoughts on uh, other questions here we should hit on? Well, there's um, a couple of questions. Uh, one of them that, that addresses the process for submitting additional proposals. You know, uh, folks can go to the website and, and look at what the proposals are. Is, is there a, a process or a form for submitting additional proposals or is, is that process already done? Uh, again, you can put in a proposal there for sure as you it's, it's feedback on what is there. So and if you go to drivethrive.yo.gov and go to the goals and proposals and then go to each goal, then you can see all the proposals. And so if a goal is missing a proposal that you think should be considered, um, add it there. Um, the governor has to, for process, to have it considered by the legislature, get his proposal to them by December 16th. But at that point, it is just a proposal from him. So um, I will be doing an update to the legislature in January to give them an update on public um, feedback that we've received. So do continue to give feedback um, through December and into January. And then know you can always take a proposal right to the legislature this year. And then it, as I was saying, um, ARPA, the, the deadline to spend is the end of 2026. So we're still uh, five years out from that. So there will also be ideas to, and um, funding allocated next year. So um, there, there, there's, not an, there's not an urgency now. This is just the beginning of, of a much longer process. Anything else, Ty? Yeah, um, and that, that actually answered the, the next question I was going to ask. I was going to ask what's the timeline for for ARP, and, and as you explained, it goes to the end of 2026. Um, the, another question that we got uh, was, will funding be dispersed to counties based on population? Great, yeah. Um, really good uh, question, because I know that, that there's a lot of that. And the counties did receive uh, money directly from this act that went um, immediately to them. So the county governments control that funding and also um, municipalities did as well. And there is still a proposal um, that would create a pot of money that local communities or local entities could apply for. Um, and we'd be asking that they um, meet other criteria, meet ARPA. And so there will be a program if the legislature if, if that proposal goes through the governor to the legislature um, and they approve of it, um, the, the way that it is, is drafted now, so obviously it would likely change a lot and could change during the legislative process, is we would have um, an application process for entities to apply for um, if, they, if they wanted to leverage more money. Um, and for instance, um, sewage uh, and water projects are allowable and a lot of municipalities got some money, but not enough to do a full project. So we might be working with them to apply for that. But here's one thing you really need to consider as you look at the website. Um, there's over $3 billion of proposed projects there alone. So if you add in another proposal, um, you'd be adding to that total, which is great. Um, you, you know, we're, we, uh, everybody's up for big ideas right now and over the next year. Um, but there's going to be a lot of these proposals that are going to have to be rejected because there isn't enough money to go around. But as other panelists have said, there are other pots of money that could potentially be used for some of these projects. And maybe something comes along in the future, too, that gives us an opportunity to fund them. But what I know the governor has said and other uh, elected officials have said is, is that they really appreciate people thinking big and having ideas that maybe you're gonna to need to be worked on and developed more over multiple years, but we should be aiming for them as a state if we identify them and see the value and how they would help Wyoming thrive. Great, thank you. Uh, there was, we had another question on the 
kind of the structure of how how these uh, proposals look on the website. Uh, where can we find details for each proposed sub goal of each of the 10 overarching goals? Um, in other words, more detailed content of each noted sub goal. Great, great comment. So um, if, if you put a comment into the comment uh, feature there on that website, we could reach back out to you if somebody wanted more detail or wanted somebody to call them about a specific proposal. So again, we got the goals, and the proposals with detail there, but if you're looking for more discussion about that, somebody could get a hold of you about that if you give us that feedback on the website. Thanks a lot. Great, and then uh, there, there were some, we've had a few questions on specific uh, proposals, specific projects that have, that have been identified. Um, I, I think probably the, the best way, uh, like this, this question asks if, there, if there's been much consideration given to emergency medical, paramedic, uh, AEMT education, and the workforce needed for those positions. Um, I think a lot of those specific questions may be answered on the website, but I, you know, I'd leave it to you to, to, to answer those questions as well. Yes, I, that's a great point, and, and it's it's interesting to see a couple of people have pointed to workforce to build the housing that we need. So we have a proposal to help um, get more affordable housing, workforce housing built. But yeah, then what's the workforce to build that? And it's definitely something that uh, Director Cooley is already working on um, and in conversation with uh, people about. So um, this, you know, those specific programs would come out of. The proposals that are built into what Director Cooley outlined there in goal three. So um, thanks a lot for everybody for commenting and pointing to those areas where they see workforce need. And um, yeah, again, th this has just been a very exciting time to think about that future. Um, and, and as the panelists have, have talked about, um, you know, a, a few folks, if you've been around Wyoming long enough, you probably served on a task force and, and given feedback. And, and this has been an opportunity where we've all um, been able to draw on that input that we've received. So that, you know, those task force reports, um, you know, might've been on a, on a shelf somewhere, but we've all gone to that shelf um, over the last couple months to pull off the best ideas. So I know I've worked with a lot of people on outdoor recreation and um, those are built into uh, goal number six. So, you know, thanks to everybody from all over Wyoming, from every, uh, uh, you know, community and uh, business who, who've served on these in the past, because um, it did help get us to where we are today. And that's, that's uh, I think, with some really neat ideas out there for the governor to consider and then the legislature to consider. Ty, I think if we're okay, I'll... Yeah, I think so. Um... There, there are a couple more questions came in, um, and uh, if, if you're good with, with me asking a couple more questions, I'll, I'll ask those real fast. Um, one was, uh, what's the length of time from approval to being able to, you know, kind of cuts off there. I think it's basically go ahead with the project. Yes, yeah, so we're moving into essentially a phase that is like the normal budgeting process for government. So the governor makes a recommendation to the legislature. The legislature takes that. They take public comment as well. They build out a final proposal, vote on it. Um, and then when that passes, they can set the time for when it goes into effect, either July 1st of 2022, or they could do some things effective immediately. Um, and so, you know, there may be some uh, programs that are going to receive funding um, on July 1st, and there's others that uh, might take some more time uh, if there's an application process for a specific project um, to, to receive funding. So um, it, it will be a pretty normal process for when we when you look at state um, budgeting. All right, and I have two more questions, and I think that'll probably be about all you've got time for. Um, can you clarify how much the state of Wyoming has received in compared to the $3 billion in proposals? Great question. Yes, uh, so far we've received 534 million and another 534 million is due to the state um, in early 2022. Um, so just about a billion dollars is what we're talking about developing 
uh, that would need to be allocated. And some of that can go to revenue replacement. And again, that's can help us off, um, offset future budget cuts or create some other one-time investment opportunities. Great, thank you. And then the last question that we had uh, was, this may be an odd question, but there, but will there be reversions if other states don't spend all their ARPA funds? And is Wyoming allowed to earn and retain interest on the corpus of the ARPA money until it's allocated? Very good questions. Um, it will be interesting to see, you know, the reversions wouldn't happen until the end of 2026. So um, hard to speculate on that. I would assume um, it's possible, but I, I would not assume it. we would get any from that as Wyoming um, with some of those these other COVID relief funds, federal um, funds and programs. The reversions have gone back to the federal government and they've kept them in, and reallocated them, not to other states, but to other programs. Um, and then lastly, um, uh, sorry, well, the last part of that question was, um, uh, can we re get earn interest? Yes, we can. So Ty, I just I wanna thank you very much for facilitating and, and helping us do this virtual town hall. Um, thank you very much for that. And, and again, thanks to everybody who's willing to participate in, in virtual town halls. So they sure do allow us to have some good communication and, and um, thanks to, uh, for participating today and joining us. And really wanna uh, again, thank the panelists on here um, for, for all the work they've done. They have more than full-time jobs. And when the governor asked them to serve on this strike team, they said, sure, um, and just added to their, uh, their, their workload. Um, and then also just wanna thank the other folks who've served on the strike team from county commissioners to um, Mayor Matt Hall from Cody and representing municipalities, legislators, and other folks who have participated. So um, thank you all so much for, for being part of this.